Well, thank you very much and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here today. I'm pleased to introduce our special guest, Gordon Voth, uh, the president of Seniors United Now, or SUN, it's also known as, and Karen McDonald, assistant executive director of the Seniors Association of Greater Edmonton, and it has the brilliant acronym SAGE. Uh, both Gordon and Karen will speak shortly, and then we will take your questions. Just moments ago, I had the privilege to introduce Bill 5, the Seniors Home Adaptation and Repair Act. Bill 5 will enable new low-income home equity loan program, which helps seniors remain secure and independent in their own homes. In addition to the loan program, we are restoring $2 million in grants to help seniors who are most in need. Seniors have told us that being able to stay in their homes and communities as long as they choose or for as long as they are able is vital to their independence and quality of life. Our bill will allow senior homeowners who qualify to finance needed home repairs and adaptations. Through this home equity program, seniors will be able to finance needed repairs and adaptations like widening doorways and hallways, installing walk-in tubs, replacing roofs, and making electrical uh, repairs, just to name a few examples. The program will help as many as 145,000 senior households or about 260 seniors throughout the province. We know that the majority of seniors own their own homes. About 90% of seniors live in private households, and of those, about 83% own their own home. The new home equity loan program is a new option and, of course, a voluntary program that will help seniors remain at home. It will help many more seniors and offer a wider range of repairs and renovations than what is currently covered under the existing program. To ensure that we continue to support the most vulnerable seniors, the new loan program would, will also have a grant component, something the previous government had left out completely. We want low-income seniors who may lack sufficient equity to still be able to ac access supports for essential home repairs. It is vital that seniors are confident and secure when applying to our program. Bill 5 contains measures to protect consumers, including provisions to review the cost of a project, as well as the right to cancel contracts. Bill 5 will ensure consumer rights and protections under the Fair Trading Act and its regulations are fulfilled. This is a fiscally responsible program, particularly given the current environment. We also anticipate the program will generate new work for contractors and help to stimulate the economy. The program is a positive step forward that helps individual seniors, but addresses the needs and priorities of our growing, aging population. All of us value what it means to have a home. And I believe we all appreciate positive steps to help seniors stay at home and remain independent as well. Thank you, and I would now like to call on Gordon to uh, share a few comments. Thank you, Minister. SUN was created to advocate for seniors in Alberta. We advocate for senior benefits and also for senior living concerns. Sun was, in the past, a leading advocate for the adoption of the Property Tax Deferment Plan. This fits in with our motto of seniors aging in place. Based on this motto, it is our pleasure to embrace the proposed Seniors Home Adaptation and Repair Program, a loan for the repair of Housing and the physical able is vital to the independence and quality of a senior's life. Our home adoption and re this home adoption will assist the seniors to remain in comfort and safety in their home for a longer period of time, which is very consistent with the goals and objectives of Seniors United Now. And we're proud to be here today to support this. Thank you, Gordon. And now, Karen? Uh, SAGE, as well as uh, research, shows that healthy communities are communities of all ages. And SAGE is particularly excited about this particular program 
because it is an opportunity for us to ensure that seniors are able to age in their communities. And so while the program itself is focused on the needs of seniors, and we believe will be a welcome addition uh, to the quality of life of seniors in Alberta, it is actually a boon, I think, for communities because seniors uh, contribute significantly to their communities when they're allowed to age in place in a home that is meeting their needs effectively. Thank you, thanks so much. Yeah, just one clarification before we open the floor to questions. Uh, Emily Lauren Dack is one of the co-sponsors of the bill. The other co-sponsor is actually Edmonton MLA John Carson. So now that we've got that all out of the way, uh, any questions for the minister or any of our guests? Uh, Mr. Bonth, I was wondering about what difference will this make uh, to a senior or senior couples living in a home that needs repair? I mean, what, what difference will it make? Well, I can see that the seniors would be unable to make the repairs because the majority of the s seniors at this time may be living right at their maximum income level and therefore they would be able to utilize this program to improve and maybe save money in terms of energy efficiency and those things and would allow them to live in much more comfort than if they were had to do it themselves, which they couldn't. Are there some things that you're seeing from your members that are more need than others? You mentioned, um, you cited one example, but I'm thinking inside the home to allow them to live there longer. Are you seeing different examples come up more frequently? We see quite a few examples of where seniors need to improve their ability to remain in their home for an extended period of time as well as to be able to afford the house. So it, it becomes an issue for seniors that they uh, need help in these areas so that they can remain there and have the type of house that the rest of us enjoy. And in terms of adaptations, structural adaptations, what, uh, what kinds of things do you think that are really needed out there? Well, I think lifts are a much needed adaptation for particularly those seniors that live in by levels if you live in a bungalow like myself you still have to get from the garage up to the up to your house or you have to get over the threshold in the front door so lifts are very important also door sizes are also important where if you have to use a walker or a wheelchair you're able to get the right size of door that allows you to uh, be able to look after yourself and kitchens. If you are at all unable to stand for any length of time, mm. my wife has two replacement knees, so I have been designated to do all the standing jobs. So, because <laughs> we couldn't afford to put in a, a lower counter. So those are the kind of things that will allow seniors they're an impediment now, but they allow seniors to remain in their home, for, even if it's just one year, then they're not in a facility that's consuming more dollars. Mr. how many Albertans do you expect will take advantage of this new program, and how much uh, do you think the province will be providing to them? Well, uh, we're estimating about 145,000 145,000 households will be interested. So that's about uh, 260,000 seniors. And the maximum that the loan program does uh, allow is 40,000. And that's, we, we find that that, usually most repairs or renovations, adaptations can be done in that, uh, in that up to that level. Any estimates as to how many people will uh, ask and benefit from, from this program? Well, that, that is, you know, we're saying one, 145,000 and uh, the, about that number of seniors will, uh, and we find that as these programs go forward, that more will hear of them. I mean, certainly we have a communications campaign to support everyone to know about them, working with our partners here, Sun and Sage, you know, so they'll let their organizations know as well as other organizations across the province so that people will know about this program. But sometimes word of mouth is the most powerful, so someone has a, has a, a uh, was able to get a loan, they talked to their neighbor, and so it, I'm sure it will grow. It won't be that the first year, but uh, we're certainly uh, wanting to make it available to as many seniors as possible. 
Minister, have we done any research in terms of how this is going to have effect on, say, the health care system or other systems where these seniors may be, in, as uh, Mr. Voth mentioned, in long-term homes? Have you looked at how this could impact the health care system? Well, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, well, we have about uh, half a million seniors in uh, Alberta currently, and uh, in uh, approximately uh, 20 years, we, we see that number doubling. And so there'll be more and more demand, and also as seniors age and become older seniors, 75 and older, their needs increase. And so certainly our population is aging, you know, to be having many more older seniors. And so, of course, that has a, a significant impact if people ha need to be in facilities. And so this program is... Uh, really an important one because that allows people to stay in their homes, have the adaptations that they need, and uh, they, uh, I mean, we just, I know from the consultations that I did with the many groups across the province, that that's where seniors want to be. You can see in, in my opening remarks, 90% live in uh, their homes, 83% own their own homes, so it, it's, people want to be in their homes, and so whatever we can do as a government to support that, uh, we know that that will save uh, in, in housing costs when we have to, when people need uh, more support. If they can be supported at home, that's way better. Minister, what's the cost of this program? Well, the cost of the program, I mean, really, right now, it's uh, the, uh, the operation of the program, like uh, the, the Ministry of Seniors and Housing offers many programs, the uh, special needs uh, assistance program, the seniors benefit, uh, we have an elder abuse program, we have many, many programs. And so this is a program that uh, can be administered by staff that already do that kind of work. And so in terms of operational dollars, we can absorb it all in our current budget. And actually we're saving the government money. This program, uh, the, they had a grant program that was cut by the previous government and it cost eight million dollars. And uh, uh, right now, we are creating a new program that's a loan program, plus it has a $2 million grant program for those low-income seniors that wouldn't qualify for the loan. And so, really, that's uh, the cost of the program. And how much is being set aside for the loan part of it? In the loan part of it? Yeah. Well, it, we will, I mean, we'll be borrowing the money for the loan ourselves and, uh, you know, charging a small uh, rate of interest. Uh, and uh, so, you know, the loans can go out to as many as possible. But how much in terms of dollar figures? Well, I mean, we don't know specifically. Like, if we, if, say, what we're estimating is uh, 145 household, 145,000 households uh, did uh, apply for the loan, and then 40, uh, we say 40,000 maximum, so times those two numbers. I mean, that's sort of the, the maximum it would be. Uh, you're setting aside some dollars to cover for the beginning of the program and the first loans? Well, I mean, we are, you know, we have, we can administer it through our existing, uh, uh, you know, our budgets, the operation of it, and certainly the loans, we can do that, and we're charging, uh, at prime for uh, the loans that we have. So we do, we have the resources absolutely to carry it out. We'll come back to the floor if there are any more uh, follow up questions. We'll just go to the phone lines right now. Uh, for one question and a follow up if desired, uh, operator, please per put through the first call. Your next question is from Jillian Slate from Medicine Hat News. Good afternoon. Um, just regarding the loan, so the interest rates charged to the um, that the recipient, the senior, would be at prime, um, and uh, what, and that the uh, government would also be borrowing that money in order to pass it on to the senior. Am I, is that correct? No, no, no. I mean this. This loan program is uh, very much a, a, a significant benefit for the senior to come to us as a government as opposed to going to any uh, bank. We have a simple interest. It's not compound interest. Another piece that's very unique to this program is that seniors don't have to pay, like they get the loan, they don't have to pay each month a certain amount of the loan. They don't have to pay back the loan until they the property that it's for is sold. So there's some really significant benefits to, uh, you know, the, Al the government administering this type of program. Um, I'm just wondering about the financial benefits of that, if, if they are still going to pay the prime, a prime interest rate. 
could they not get that through a financial institution? Well, generally, it's difficult to get prime. I, I think that uh, uh, depending on, uh, you know, individuals' credit rating and things like that, but that is, we see is that is a very fair rate. Okay, we can go, come back to the floor if there are uh, any more questions. What prompted this legislation? Is this coming from, were you hearing this from seniors groups, or is this something that you came up with yourself, or what, what's the, what prompted this? Yes. Absolutely. It's, it's working with seniors groups and, uh, you know, knowing that it's difficult, as uh, uh, Gordon here explained very well, some people are living very close uh, to uh, the edge and uh, they want to stay in their homes. And how do we as a government make sure that they can stay in their homes and uh, have the quality of life in the communities that they've lived in for many years, be connected to their friends and family? So uh, it, we wanted to very much support that. In terms of uh, the economic stimulus, you made a reference to it. Do mm. you have a ballpark figure as to what your expectations are or what you hope? Um, in terms it, of job creation, uh, activity? Well, I mean, we, we don't really have job creation uh, number that, but we think that the existing jobs right now are in an economic downturn. People aren't as busy as they normally would. So this will increase more activity. And uh, I think that uh, people will have, uh, you know, more business and uh, it will be uh, supportive. But uh, in terms of, you know, creating a new job, I'm not sure about that. But certainly uh, giving people some good work in a time when it's tough to get jobs, I think it, this will definitely do that. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.